Right, the last thing I'll say about the success, which has been brilliant, is the, this. It changes the way people talk to you. I've had this conversation a thousand times over the last couple of years. I'll be talking to someone normally at a party or a gathering or something, and they'll go, Mick, 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 can I tell you something? <laughs> and I'll go, no, if you want. They go, I could never do your job in a million years. Do you know that? I could never do your job. <laughs> and I never know what to say to them. Yeah, well, you are a bit boring, ain't you? <laughs> I'm only talking to you because there's a lovely food draft coming through the kitchen. <laughs> People with proper jobs say this to me, the teachers and the, uh, bleeding, the social workers, the people holding this mess together, they say it to me. A man said it to me the other day, I was talking to him, and suddenly he stopped me and said, he said, Mick, can I tell you something? <laughs> and I said, yes. Because I always answer people where they talk to me, right? <laughs> I'm like a social chameleon. <laughs> yeah. And he is. He said, I could never do your job in a million years. I could never do your job in a million years. I said, well, what do you do, mate? He said, I'm a brain surgeon. I said, hold up. Let me go and have a little drop of Stella Artoris. <laughs> Create a little bit of work for your son. <laughs> a little drop of do as you're told. What a ridiculous thing that... The uh, minute you ever drop a that, people look at you a bit suspicious, don't they? Oh, yeah. You go in the office, buy four cans of Stella, and the woman's like, oh, <laughs> you might want to take this leaflet, sir. <laughs> so I said to him, well, what do you do, mate? Tell me about your job. He said, oh, well, you know, I'll get this all the time. It's not that complicated. He said, we get one up from the ward, we take the top of the head off, we have a little look about, we do what we can, we put the top back on, and we put some pins around the edge, which I thought was Andy. <laughs> all the time he was telling me, all I kept thinking was, yeah, but where'd you put the top? <laughs> I'd be terrified of losing the top, wouldn't you? <laughs> Sandra, don't throw the top away, babe. It's got to go back on. I know what you like with your clearing up. Because I've messed up in work, I've lost a lot of stuff in work. Buckets, ladders, vans. <laughs> I did, I lost a van once. I did, it was spliff on the way back. <laughs> so I was like, where'd I put that van? <laughs> I'll phone the police, they ain't got enough on at the moment. <laughs> and I've messed up in work big time. I've put my foot through ceilings worth thousands of pounds. But you do what you do in that situation. You fuck off home, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> you come back in the next day. <laughs> Who's done that up there? And I said nothing. <laughs> but losing the top of someone's head? <laughs> How are you going to talk your way out of that one with a family as they come in? Hello there. Yes, he's doing very well. Why is he wearing a bobble hat? <laughs> uh, no easy way to tell you this. <laughs> We've lost the top of his head. Sandra's in bits, she'd put her house keys in it. <laughs> She's been knocked out for 48 hours. Are you out or were you out?